Welcome to Diary of Japan, episode four. Look, I look very, very smart, but I'm actually back in the UK because the World Cup has ended and we are trying to catch up with all the footage that I created. But episode four, we've got a dinner out with me and Alex. Uh, we spend a lot of time. I try to go to a gym and things don't work out very well. We have a lunch out together as a team. I do some work for Sky New Zealand and we go and visit a very famous temple featured in Lost in Translation. Thanks so much for all the love you've given the last three episodes. If you want to subscribe and share, then please do. Stay tuned because this episode is a big one. Do you know what's been a massive highlight of my Japan trip so far is the discovery that they have some incredible coffee spots uh, all over the place. We use this app called the Best Coffee app and it has changed the game for me. When I lived here, I just didn't occur to me that they were, I knew they were into the coffee because if you go past from the vending machines and stuff, but they are mad for it and they'll love a pour over a Chemex, a French press. I've been educating this absolute coffee disgrace. He thought that Nescafe Instant or Kenko was the, the height of de rigueur, but he's looking very nice. He's, what do you call that top salmon? Fuchsia. Is it fuchsia? Salmon mousse. Um, how are you today? I, a few concerns over your sleeping patterns, your general demeanour. My worse. Do you think it's because they're watching a lot of porn at night that's keeping you awake? But I, I slept like a log last night. But you, you, you well, we've, we've got evidence that it's not just last night. Have so you not, forgive, you not forgiven me? Well, what, 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 that, what was more shocking? Like, what was more shocking? The volume or the story of how quickly I went to sleep? I'll put the whole package together, let's see. Show you the problem. Traumatic experience. Do you know what? I think we should, I'd like to just hang around with you a lot in general. I just think you make me laugh a lot. You're just general misery. Um, but how, how, <laughs> my, my misery is maybe just to hang around with you. I didn't think of that. No, I'm resilient. The, you do, you do. You do. So a day five, I've had a few ups and downs. This is quite a relaxing day. I'm off to do some jiu-jitsu. What are your plans? I've had my eyebrows threaded. I'm going to light the patient. Where have you got this book? I've just tried to provide a juxtaposition to your job. Oh. You lived in Tokyo for seven months. It's the best thing to go to do. I think you should go and visit one of the temples not far from here. Or I think what you should do is go to Har Harajuku. It's uh, where they all dress up and there's loads of people you can walk through and it's really interesting touristy. There's loads of shopping. So it's in, in terms of like market stalls, if you go to the park, apparently you can park in the temple, you will see some incredible things like 30 Elvises just doing what Elvises do. You know, maybe uh -huh. there, there might be some Donald Trump lookalikes just trumping it up. I've improved this technology game and his Instagram game. You should follow Alex. Was it Alex? Um, Alex Payne? Hey, hey. No, you need to know it. That's rule number one. What's your name? Alex Payne TV. Check him out. Well, look. We're day five. It, the wheels haven't come off yet. A little bit of aggro, <laughs> but we're surviving. Um, barely. Coffee's a game changer. Alex getting educated. Tins is off playing golf with Tiger Woods. He's dropped us like a hot potato. Yeah. Sort of love you guys, love to see you guys, love to see you. Yes, yeah, see you guys, love to see you, see you, bye bye. This is a big moment for us. We've never queued for food in Japan, and it's part of the, the custom. You know, like to queue, we've got a couple, a couple of lads behind me, queuing into Ikari Steak Place. Uh, uh, ooh, big, yeah, they're, they're quite impressed with my size, but it's quite a nice thing. We're at busy, busy Japanese street here. But, kind of that buzzy thing. I think if you're ever going to make a video, come to Japan because the background looks fantastic. It's kind of like, what would we say? Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Very much like Blade Runner. We're Blade going, Runner does lunch. Yeah. I was always taught as well, posters and pictures of food were no were no good, but actually it turns out that... Yes, my natural inclination is that I would never order off a pictorial. Yeah, the same here. But the same here. Everyone has it and it kind of looks like low rent, but this has had five stars on TripAdvisor. These lads are queuing outside, but very excited to see that. But I think it's a big moment because I have never queued for food when I was in Japan. But you'll see little places like Izakaya's, ramen joints, like 10 people How operating outside. Nice we had ramen, I took the lads for ramen. Very nice, had a pork rib ramen actually. We hadn't had, I like a tonkotsu ramen. This was something slightly different and uh, went down well, didn't it? Only when we discovered there was a thousand calories a bowl. Not so great, not great for the sausage rig, for the temple, okay. Unbelievable steak lunch with Alex there, incredible uh, food. That's one of the best things about Japan, is that you just find these little setups that you, you think are gonna be village, and then you suddenly get them. Hello, brother, you right, mate? Yeah. Thanks, mate. 
uh, you get this incredible, uh, incredible food, um, and it's actually mega. We had a steak, steak and a burger with corn, rice. Came out in about five minutes. Chopsticks, smashed it out on the road. I'm off to go and do some jujitsu now. Jujitsu -ju 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 now. I'm gonna find myself a taxi, get back to the hotel, get my gum shield and my, my groin guard. Two essentials, not something I need when you're walking down the street, when you've got some guy trying to pull you onto you. You don't want to get a knee in the bollocks. I actually need myself in the bollocks the other day, which is not good. Uh -oh, uh -oh. So I've taken Alex <laughs> to, a, to a hidden gem uh, under, uh, I think it's your Ratu station, it's called Andy's. Uh, it's an incredible place when I came when I was living in Japan. It's a mega, mega, mega venue. Uh, it's one of those absolute hidden gems and what's extraordinary about it is there are rugby shirts where you look at everybody here. Just yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm very excited to see what crab legs on all going to absolutely smash the back out of this. It could escalate to a few beers. We'll see what it's like. So I just to add to James' video. We're in a taxi on the way here and I said, one or two. And he went, let's see where the night goes. We've got two vats of Asahi <laughs> to start us with. And away we go. Away we go. We'll see you later. See how we get up. Wait till Tins gets here. <laughs> so the lads were out and about today um, they went out last night so I was kind of on my own I googled best sushi place in uh, Tokyo and we actually had one next door to me which is incredible I've never had sushi like it stuff that you normally kind of taste like oh I'm not sure about this I had, I had squid that like melted you know sometimes it can be a bit rubbery uh, some of the tuna had minced tuna which was just different level even the mackerel and stuff which could be quite um, you know an acquired taste was was unbelievable that I'm still not a massive fan of the uni which is sea urchin I just don't get it it's not my vibe I love you although so that was kind of mega I've just been out um, off to do, do some jiu-jitsu training uh, it's kind of rush hour time in Tokyo at the moment so traffic is taking a bit of time, but uh, it's nice to go out and explore. Chloe arrives in a couple of days. Uh, I filmed for New Sky New Zealand this morning, um, and I'm doing some more stuff with him tomorrow, but maybe going out with beer with one of my old teammates this evening. We shall see how it goes. But first up, I've got some, some jiu-jitsu to do. So I'm doing some work today for Sky New Zealand, and unbelievably, we are top, on top of the Fuji TV building, which has the most insane view of <laughs> Tokyo, it is incredible to be up here. Uh, I think it's quite a rarity. It's a pretty special building that you can kind of see when you're flying in or when you're coming along on the motorway and the freeway to get in here. Uh, I'm doing some stuff, talking about the All Blacks, obviously. Whatever you do, don't go on Sky New Zealand and slag off the All Blacks, rule number one. Uh, who's gonna win? New Zealand. Uh, I'm obviously not gonna say that, I'm gonna say England. Um, but uh, yeah, it's amazing. And, and also, very specially, in the background, just behind me, Mount Fuji, what an incredible, incredible view that is. Apparently you can't ever really see it, apart from on a super clear day. Look at this, top of the Fuji TV building. Views for days. Another day in Japanese paradise. Um, 
the lads have disappeared for two days. I haven't seen the team. Uh, I think Tins did 48 hours on the steam, which was is incredible. Uh, I went out to dinner with Simon Shaw last night in the Kill Bill restaurant. Obviously, there was a lot less bloodshed going on, but the food was incredible. I believe it has a Michelin star or World of Fake News doing your research, but the food was incredible. So if you come over to Tokyo, it's 100% worth doing. Uh, I'm just out to meet uh, the Alex for a coffee, a little coffee spot. He has uh, got meetings. I'm, uh, I've got some training to do today. I'm going to the batting cages. Um, Chloe arrives tomorrow. Lonnie, Lonnie Paxton from the uh, Denver Broncos. Go, a guy from GoPro, my guru from GoPro. Super Bowl winner, long snapper is coming to town. Uh, I've got some of my other mates coming down, so it's a bit of a social weekend. England versus New Zealand as well. I actually quite like, it's not too early in the morning, it's about 8.30, out operating, walking around. It's really nice to be to be out exploring. The weather's actually really good. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt, obviously with my serious operating. Um, but yeah, look, I'm looking forward to today. It's been quite quiet, actually. Just been doing our own thing, so I'm looking forward to reuniting with the team. The one thing I am struggling to understand over here, though, is the full food situation. So the food is incredible, uh, undeniably incredible. Uh, you, it's absolutely amazing. But culturally, it is. I just can't get my head around eating like fried chicken, noodles, uh, fish, like real heavy fish at breakfast. Um, I've started doing it myself a little bit just to try to get my head around it. Some of these blokes just rolling in and having the, the most niche professional food at, at, in the morning. I just can't really, can't really compute it. I know culture, if you always end up kind of eating noodles or whatever, but I've started having miso soup every morning, but breakfast for me is the best meal of the day. You get to have eggs and then sweet stuff, eggs and pancakes. So just a little thought for you. I was talking about this morning, how the team has separated and that we lost tins. We found him. We found this book. He's back. Well, he's not quite back. He's not. He's got a head like a shriveled prune because he's, he's been so he's, dehydrated. But I've, I've gotten some some drinks and some content that he's he's now filling himself up with. Um, yes. I mean, how, how, how was Tokyo? I think it was good. Do you get a full memory blackout? No, no, I don't get. Uh, no, it was good. Well, right, um, fine. They all sort of blended in to one. You keep saying that you'd like today to end. Well, no, it's I, I it's like eleven forty four. I like to fast forward it. Right. Oh, got, oh, hello, we're live here. So we one. Yes, baby. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Like, yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Still feel like I'd like to sleep. Fine. Well, you can't. We've got batting cages. Batting cages. Baseball. You can get an early night though at some point. Alex is here as well. We're all back together. Back together, stash to the max. I want to preface this video by saying, I absolutely love Japan. I think it's one of the most amazing places on earth. I love the Japanese people. But I have discovered one of the most frustrating experiences of my life. And it's happened to me four times. Now, so much so that I almost lost my shit. And normally, as you know, I'm a calm, under control fella. Trying to train in Japan is the hardest thing in the history of the universe. So first things first, wouldn't let me have a day pass with two hours to go, because I wanted to do an hour's training, they wouldn't let me in, okay? I can understand that. Then they wouldn't let me in because I've got tattoos. Okay, I'm clearly not a member of the Yakuza. It's 2019, everyone's got tattoos, even your nan's got fucking tattoos. So don't really think it's an issue. I understand it's a cultural thing. So we will forgive that. So I bought myself a long sleeve shirt, right? A lovely jiu-jitsu long sleeve shirt from Maxis Jiu-Jitsu, so I can train without getting bollocked every five minutes. Unfortunately, both my feet are tattooed. And I wore short socks today, thinking that nobody would care about a tattoo poking out the top of my sock. So mid through way through my warm-up. And just to let you know, when I train, I train hard. I don't fanny around. I'm not in the gym for, for fun. I don't fucking sit on my phone. I don't sit there like jogging on a cross trainer or messing around on treadmill. Like I'm there to work, get in and out. So I'm mid-session. 
woman comes along and says, cover up your tattoos. I said, how? Just cover up your tattoos. I said, how? How do you want me to cover up your tattoos? She said, just cover up your tattoos. I said, listen, love, you're not listening. How the fuck do you want me to cover up my tattoos? I haven't got long socks. She says, we have to leave. I said, I'm not leaving. I'm mid-session, I'm not leaving. So, she obviously radioed in and said something in Japanese. Some little bloke poked his head out and thought better of picking a fight today because I looked like I was in the mood. So she said, wear long socks. And I said, listen, sorry, respect the culture, wear long socks. So I take some weights to an area. The bloke comes out of nowhere, picks up the weights. No, he can't have it here. I said, well, where do you want me to do it? There's only a weights area. Well, you can't have it here. So I get my Google Translate out, explain I'm doing circuit training. He says, well, you've got to put shoes on. I was, I was wearing socks on the mats because you're not allowed to go barefoot. So I said to him, yes, but I can't take the weights on the mat because the science says you can't take the weights on the mat because we can't wear the shoes on the gym floor. I said, well, look, we're a bit of a fucking on pass, aren't we? Where, where do you want me to go? So then he passed, passed me a pair of tiny little clogs that he wants me to walk from one side of the gym to the other. So I just thought, fuck this. So I put my shoes on, picked up my weight, went into a little area, right? Started doing a circuit. The same trainer turns up with a little old lady, right? Who's pretty much life over, to be honest. I don't know what she's doing in the gym. Fair play to her, but she ain't, you know, I don't know what she's trying to do. Obviously stave off osteoporosis, I would have thought. But she, I'm then trying to fucking do a session. He then interrupts me to tell me to move. And I said, listen, where do you want me to move? You wouldn't, I wouldn't do it over there, couldn't do it over there. I honestly just turned around and went, listen mate, fuck off. I'm in the middle of a session, just fuck off and leave me alone. I was blowing, I was on my third set of burpees, doing Tabata, I was hanging, sweating, and wearing a long sleeve top in an unair conditioned gym, fucking training in a tiny little zone where every time I do something I bang my head and he has a go so I've lost it but everywhere I go it, it keeps happening and I just don't understand no wonder nobody wants to train over here and I reckon at some point someone's getting thrown out of a window could be me could be them but I just want to train and get stuff done and I, I want to be in there for an hour no more no less I'm trying to train for a fight and I'm getting more contact with the staff than I am with any future opponents so rant over Japan, please sort your gym etiquette out. Yeah, otherwise, no wonder nobody, nobody's in real decent shape over here. Or oh, was that rude? I don't know, fuck it, I'm only telling the truth. So there you have it, it's my gym rant over. I'm gonna go and lie down and my arm hurts, so uh, maybe I'll calm down later. So the band is back together. Uh, again, we are out filming some content, very excited. We're going to a temple. We've had a full change of crew. The last band got fired, except uh, Sai couldn't get rid of him. He's like a piece of chewing gum in your hair. You can try your best to cut him out, but he'll still keep coming back for more. Um, but we'll get rid of him eventually and replace him with somebody competent, hopefully. <laughs> Look at him, he's getting so, he gets so arsy. He's ex-BBC, he's actually very good at what he does. He's just a bit of a dick. Um, <laughs> Look at his face. Will you relax? It's not live, Sai. This is all for the, uh, the documentary, the mockumentary, the Diary of Japan. Look at the lads, stashed up. Um, so yeah, I've trained this morning, had a massive uh, rant about the uh, training situation in Japan. Tins hasn't bothered turning up. He was off playing golf with Tiger Woods yesterday. Um, I think he's had a few jars. I'm wearing some incredible stash on the lash. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's turning into a pretty special trip. I'm looking forward to tonight's second live show, uh, which should be absolutely mega. And hopefully in this video, you'll see more of what we get up to and how it goes. But I'll catch you all later because I've got to keep walking as I'm going to miss my tram, tube, whatever it is. Always take the stairs. It's good for what? You're like a geography teacher down a field trip. You're looking at some fossils later, mate. You are like a rugby fossil. <laughs> Somebody falling apart the <laughs> Nasty, Stink. nasty. Stink. Oi, do you want to see that temper of yours That's coming out, do we? Nasty, don't be nasty. It's just a little bit of humour. The Saurus lived about 25 years ago. Yeah, it did, yeah. Prize. It did, yeah. It was a plant eating dinosaur. Yeah. With four fat hooves. Yeah. Quite powerful. Yeah. But ran away from trouble at the first sight. Yeah. <laughs> Made a lot of noise. Yeah. But had no teeth. Just like guns. <laughs> It's very nasty, isn't it? Screechy. Screechy. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, whatever I was, I would have fucking eaten you within about three seconds. You would have popped your head up. Little geography teacher. I wasn't was around the priest. Sensible, dull little coat you'd have. Not a lot of offering. Oh, a little bouffant lid. No teeth. What you would give for a bouffant lid. Oh, well, yeah, what that's true. Fine, fine, fine. fine. But oh, your little spaghetti body, I'd yeah. just eat you. Honestly, you, you'd... No, you'd no. <laughs> One bite. I've seen you. Geography teachers don't do that. You look like an IT consultant. 
uh, uh, past the dot com era. What do you look like? <laughs> where's, where's the Chelsea boots, bro. Chelsea boots. Absolute horse? Chelsea boots. Two friends. I will say this again, you're a very good looking man. Kind of wasted on you though, I think. So you've got it, you just have a ruthless streak in you. I imagine your single days with a lot of like, sort of like apologising and hugging all the time. Still have a lot of hugging. Yeah. Very exciting, the whole gang. It's the first time we've been, I know it's the second time we've been on the Japanese subway. We're going off to temples and various other activities. The geography teacher looks like he sort of might be going out on the town, but also got to do a lecture on fossils at three, town at four, isn't it? We do back backpack, trying to show that you like could be sporty, but you and I both know you know. Even though I've got you on a training plan, haven't I? Yeah. Turning that little spaghetti rig into something resembling a man's body, as opposed to an amorphous warm world. I did think you surprised me. You told me you could run 10k, nay, problem. No, I can't run anymore. I can't barely walk, mate. You've seen me. I almost just fell down a set of stairs because my foot didn't work. Yeah. Useful. So I'd like to taunt you. Like this, imagine if we were in the gladiatorial ring and you'd be yeah. this big sort of lumbering thing in the middle. Yeah. I'd just get you death by a thousand cuts. Are you just going past slice me? Just quick. Oh, really? You reckon yeah. you're that quick? I don't reckon I'm that quick, but I reckon you're that slow. <laughs> You know this entire YouTube channel is just you abusing me every chance you get of me laughing about it? Somebody has to. Well, my wife does it. A lot of people do it. Kind of happens. Tour manager. It's the school teacher. Where's your little pink umbrella so we don't get lost? Put it up in the air. Look at him shaking your head at me. A little anorak. Make sure in case the typhoon gets you a little bit wet. All right, all right, right. We're not, we're not about labels on this show. We're just enjoying ourselves, you know. Just relax. Japanese temple. A hey, Japanese temple. This is traditional Japan at its best. The crew, I think they're currently defiling a shrine, so I don't think they've quite realised what they're doing, but I can't be bothered to tell them in case, in case I'm wrong. It is pretty amazing. In the heart of rolling Tokyo, you find what you would expect from Japan, the stereotypical temples, bonsai trees, gods, gargoyles, geography teachers, they're all here. These lads are defiling the uh, sanctuary of something. The geography teacher's now defiled it himself. What is going on here? Is it? Lecture. Oh, goodness. So much culture, I don't even know how to absorb it all. Just as you can't think things will get any worse. Look who's hoped into view. Where have you been? Uh, well, I went to bed at 3 a.m. Right. I woke up at 3 o'clock this afternoon without saying anything. That is the best sleep. Well, actually, you've missed the big removal. We've had to move. We're at Peter Cole's. We've had to move pianos. We've got a lovely assistant hiding. She's being a bit mad. What are you hiding under there? Are you playing a game? We've got. Um, all the lads moving stuff, I have been helping. Muzzles in town, Muzzles in town moving shit, organising shit. Would you drop me help, help me carry that box? Are you sure? Just trying to let me help her, modern woman. Um, all in all, we're having a great time here. Tins has turned out, Alex and I were supposed to go for some food. But... Talk about Tiger. Talk about Tiger, Best friends. Oh, we're just talking about House of Rugby. We're here, we're at Peter Coles, it's kicking off. What's his name? Mike Spindles. He's putting our new merchandise. Who's the heavy breather? We all know who it is. All we'll do is we'll just cross that one, cross that one, and we know it's the fucking mutant. Very rude. Oh, all about all the Haas train. That's coming fresh to www.shop.joe.co.uk. Get it while it's hot. I want to know when the Zoe t shirts coming Yeah, the Zoe t shirts definitely Zoe. come. We're here, we're live, we've got about 250 people in the room. We're, we're actually sitting in front of the crowd because we couldn't get a green room because it's not big time enough. Peter Cole is the place to be, please come down. It's always business. awkward, you know. You think that Hask is a man of the people, but he hates people, so he doesn't actually ever go out and talk to him. No, I, like I wonder around, around, chat a little bit, talk a little bit of rugby, Hask is like. No, uh, first of all, he, he brought choked, his, He choked two people out tonight. First of all, he brought his own friends to the party and then talked to him pretending he was a man of the people. I like the man of the people. I want, I like the people from a distance behind a velvet <laughs> rope. That's how much I like the people. What? <laughs> 
So we're now backstage. Well, I say backstage. I mean, sitting in front of everybody. As green rooms go, this is fairly uh, yeah. discreet. And also, we never let. Okay. Uh, should never be allowed in the green room yeah. as well. So he's hovering around. Um, Obviously a massive crowd this evening, way bigger than last time, I think. Do you think? I think House of Rugby goes global for the first time this evening. It is. We've got a couple of Kiwis in there, we've got some South Africans in there, we've got a few, there's quite a few English. Quite, I quite like we have gone global, there's obviously a bit of a market in there. I don't know where this has been advertised because we've only really talked about it on social. Yeah. And obviously on the pod, so we've, got, we've gathered a lot of people. I'm obviously sporting a new top, all aboard the Hass Train. Merchandise is available from www.shop. Dot Joe, dot co UK. Very good. Very good. Not my first rodeo. Look who's, look who's written this hey. town. Aki's the main man. Hello. Old fucking Shoreditch Sheik is now looking very kind of boy bandish, actually. Cleaned up his act, <laughs> double denim. So you know actually Murray does the voiceover for Joe. He's the one that goes crouch, touch, pause, engage. House of Rugby, presented Welcome by Booth. House of Rugby. He's very good. He also has a great impression of Alex, which Alex isn't aware of. I've just dobbed him in online. We're going to get him to do that later, yeah. Unbelievable impression of you. Murray's sadly is heading to the airport for the next flight home. Murray's no longer involved. Uh, I'm very I'm excited to see how the show. We're going to talk uh, England, Australia, referees. We've got John Schmidt on board. We've got a lot of keynotes coming in. I'm very excited. Uh, <laughs> What's happening, mate? You right? That's how we start every house of rugby. He's in the closet. 